This is to all those who've been listening to old time radio that I've been podcasting for 12 years. It's time for you to purchase the old time radio collection now at the lowest prices ever. 500 gigabyte external hard drive chuck full of radio shows that we all love. And don't forget the bonuses. Here's my offer. I need everyone who hears my voice to go to oldtimeradiodvd.com to place your order today. With every order, I will include a comprehensive show guide with episode descriptions over 1982 pages this is truly once in a lifetime deal place your order today at oldtimeradiodvd.com you will be glad you did you see radio five four three two one international rescue are back on radio five Thunderbirds are go. Stand by, my people. Commencing the final countdown. The tension here in the studio mounts as we await further news. It's coming out. She's turning. Stand by for blast off. Get me Kate Kennedy. Solar module for Thunderbird 3. Where are you? Can we stand the increased heat and radiation? On paper, no. Well, there's still time. Before we melt to nothing, the fire retros, Alan, it's getting unbearable. I have, but they're not working. Alan, we're still on a collision course with the sun. <laughs> Tonight's episode, Sun Crow, introduced by Thunderbird's mastermind, Jerry Anderson. Isn't it strange that all these years after the Thunderbird series episode, Sun Probe, was made, I should find myself talking about it just as the first probe to take a close look at our sun has been launched from the American Space Shuttle. I found this a very difficult story to film. It was not an easy subject to bring to the screen. Shot after shot, Thunderbird 3 was shown closer and ever closer to the sun. Or, put it another way, the sun was forever getting bigger and bigger. I spent many nights in the cutting room trying to ensure the story came across clearly. In the end, I remember telling the editor we couldn't do any more and going home in despair. There's an old Hollywood saying, if it's bad, make it loud. I told our dabbing editor to make it loud. Our special effects were always excellent, but no matter how good they were, they always looked so much better with good sound effects or good music. Next time you watch a special effects picture on television, try turning the sound off and you'll see what I mean. Eventually, the episode came to our screens, and much to my surprise, most people told me how much they enjoyed it. Don't be put off this week's episode called Sun Probe just because I didn't like it. I didn't like Star Wars when it first came out, either. Thunderbird 3 calling Earth. This is Alan Tracy in outer space. I am en route to Thunderbird 5 with spares and stores for John, and I've been watching a video show recalling the news highlights of 2065. One flashback has just come up, which was nearly the end for Thunderbird 3. We called it Operation Sun Probe. The Solar Control Center at Cape Kennedy, after years of preparation, was set to launch their greatest project ever, a spaceship was to be sent into close orbit around the sun in order to fire a probe and literally bring back a piece of the sun for examination by the world's scientists. The spacecraft was over 600 feet long and crewed by three astronauts. Because of the intense heat, the crew were protected by 20-foot thick stainless steel walls and fantastic refrigeration equipment. The probe was designed to fly through one of the sun's greatest prominences, all mountainous flames which constantly flare up from the surface to heights of 300,000 miles and more. When the probe had collected its material, special braking rockets were designed to bring it back to unite with the parent craft. At this stage, we of International Rescue were just a few among the millions of fascinated video viewers. 
Little did we know that we would soon be deeply and dangerously involved ourselves. Stand by, Solomon. Thirteen, Thirteen seconds. seconds. Commencing final countdown. countdown. Ten. Ten. Nine. Nine. Eight. 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 Seven. 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 Six. 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 Show the launching of the Sun Probe. With me in the studio is Professor Heinz Bodman, who is going to explain just how the Sun Probe project will operate. Good evening. Say, where's Brains? Doesn't he want to hear all this? Ah, this is old stuff to him, Father. He's in his workshop playing around with his latest invention. Uh, now, Brayman, I'm gonna test your uh, secretarial characteristics. Now. Tell me, what are my appointments for the day? Don't you want to watch Operation Sun Probe, Brains? I I'd prefer to fix Brayman, Mr. Tracy. He's still far too impulsive. But Brains, they're going into orbit in five minutes. Four and one quarter minutes to be precise, Mr. Tracy. Say, you know the sun probe routine by heart. You're not as blasé as you act. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. Orbital path. Ten seconds. Right. Stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. Retros. Great. We're on correct orbit. Check radiation and temperature levels. Temperature. A-OK. -okay. Radiation A-OK. -okay. 20 seconds to firing time for probe. All systems on probe are green. 10 seconds. Firing controls are go. 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. The sun probe has been fired. We will give you all the details as they are received from the spaceship. The tension here in the studio mounts as we await further news. Sun probe going through flare now. Standing by to file remote control rockets. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Fire. It's coming out. She's turning. We've made it. Great. Let's get that probe. And then, back to Earth. Yes, it looked like all was going well. The probe had done its job and had been relinked with the parent ship. But they couldn't fire their retro rockets. Brains calculated that the intense radiation level caused by the close proximity of the sun had interfered with the craft's control system. Sun probe was on a collision course with the sun. Please stand by for a news flash. We are going over to Colonel Benson at the Solar Control Center for an important announcement. All efforts to alter the spaceship's course by firing their retros by radio beam from Earth have failed. Now I have a vital request to make. If International Rescue are watching, would they please communicate at once with Solar Control Center, Cape Kennedy? I repeat, this is vital. International Rescue, we need your help. 
Get me Kate Kennedy. Yes, sir. Very well, Colonel Benson. We'll attempt a rescue. But this is a tough one. You can say that again. Anyway, good luck. Let's go over it once again. The Sun Probe rocket is heading straight into the sun. And unless we can fire the retros to make the rocket turn round, those three solar knots are doomed. Well, uh, Mr. Tracy, the only solution is for us to fire the retros by radio beam. Well, the radio complex in Thunderbird 3 would seem the obvious choice. But, Scott, the transmission range of Thunderbird 3 isn't powerful enough. I think Thunderbird 2 transmitter would stand a much better chance. Well, Mr. Tracy, I think we may be underestimating the heat and radiation resistances of our uh, spacecraft. But the transmission potential of Thunderbird 2 could certainly be tremendous. Right. We'll launch a two-prong rescue attempt. First of all, we've got to get Thunderbird 3 launched as soon as possible. When do you think that could be, Brains? Well, the radio equipment will have to be modified, but I should think launching could take place soon after sunup. Right. Go and organize that now, Brains. Virgil, you better go to the computer room and work out what point is best for Thunderbird 2 to project a safety beam towards the sun probe. Okay, Father. Father, we'll need an extra crew member to operate the safety beam. All right, Alan, you'd better take Tintin along with you. Launching takes place at 0800 hours. <laughs> You know what to do? Yes, Father. Let's hope it works from that distance. It's got to. It's as close as you dare go. Good luck, all of you. While I was preparing Thunderbird 3, Virgil and Brains had boarded Thunderbird 2 and taken off for their destination, Mount Arkin in the Thimalayan Range, one of the coldest spots on Earth, but the nearest point of the solar ship from which to operate with any hope of success. Their job was to project a safety beam towards Sun Probe to work in conjunction with the one from Thunderbird 3. It was a long shot, but given luck, it would work. Eventually, it was time to go, and I joined Tintin and Scott on the couch in our lounge, which transports us directly to the control cabin of Thunderbird 3. The couch sank through the floor and was immediately replaced by the empty one from below, so the room looked as if it had never been disturbed. Down and down we went until the couch came to rest on the bogey truck below. Then a long race the truck until it came to rest beneath the towering hull of Thunderbird 3. Up again on a hydraulic jack until we were firmly settled in the control cabin. Stand by for blast off. With a tremendous upward surge which pinned us to our reclining takeoff couches, we were carried upward through the roundhouse which disguises the entrance to Thunderbird 3 hangar. We were on our way to the sun. Well, there's still time. We've got a whole day before... Before we melt to nothing, why doesn't Earth do something? Solar module from International Rescue. Do you read me? Now I'm hearing things. I thought that was the radio. Come in, solar module. This is International Rescue. It is the radio. <laughs> solar module to Thunderbird 3. Where are you? Can you help us? We hope so. We're going to try to fire your retros from space. Operating safety beam now. Negative. We're four hours short. Four hours? But that means we'll have to go much closer to the sun than was estimated. 
It looks like it. Can we stand the increased heat and radiation? On paper, no. But we can't just abandon those three guys. We still have a problem. How's the beam situation? All set. Transmitting safety beam now. Well, Brains, what's the position? Hmm. Well, it's a very powerful beam we're sending up, but not as yet quite powerful enough. Is there anything we can do? Oh, yeah. Once I have modified the tripartite transistor packs and made a, a few adjustments to the wiring, we can try again. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll fix us some hot coffee. I can't stand the heat. So hot. Are you sure you can't get any more out of the refrigeration plant? No. Nothing's working anymore. Where's that rescue ship? It's nearly four hours since we're in contact with them. It's still short. Can't you increase the power, Tintin? I can overrun the system up to about 0.5. Then do that, will you? We just can't go any closer. It was now or never. I just couldn't risk taking Thunderbird 3 any nearer the sun. Already there were signs of stress on the instruments and hull. Also, Tintin sounded just about all in. motors. They fired. Asher, camp. We're leaving the sun. We're gonna live. Okay. The solar ship's out of danger. Let's head for home. Just in time, I guess. I couldn't have said much more of this heat. Fire retros. Fire retros, Alan. It's getting unbearable. I have. But they're not working. Alan, we're still on a collision course with the sun. Hello, Mother. Virgil, bad news about Thunderbird 3. What's happened? Alan succeeded in saving the sun probe. But now it seems the retros have failed on Thunderbird 3, and they're heading straight for the sun. Straight for the sun. Brains. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? If it is the case that the uh, beam transmitter is still operating... Yes? We could perhaps, only perhaps, mind you, neutralize the transmitter on Thunderbird 3. Great! What's the frequency? I don't know, but I, I could probably uh, work it out on the mobile computer in Thunderbird 2. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, that's it, Virgil. Right. Open it up, and we'll work out the formula for the transmitter. Raymond. Oh, no. Virgil, we brought the wrong box. It's no use, Virgil. There's nothing we can do. Listen, couldn't you work out the formula on paper? I, I only wish I could, Virgil. But you see, without a computer, it would take weeks. But if you could work out the details of Brayman's mechanics without a computer, surely you could do... Brayman? That, that, that's it. He's our only hope. 
Well, let's get on with it, Brains, for Pete's sake. Now, uh, Brayman, I want you to calculate the following equation. What is the square root to the power of 29 of the trigonometric amplitude of 87 divided by the quantitative hydraxis of 956 to the uh, power of 77. Do you understand the question? Yes. Off you go then. Now. Come on, Brayman, come on. Do you think it's gonna work? Got to. It worked, Brains! It worked! I only hope it's right. Come on. International Rescue calling Virgil at Mount Arkham. This is International Rescue Base calling Thunderbird 2. Base from Thunderbird 2. Base from Thunderbird 2. Loud and clear, Virgil. Where are you? I'm sorry, Father. We just heard your signal as we came back from the pod. Listen, Father, it's our only hope. We haven't got time to explain. But Brains is going to try to jam Thunderbird 3's transmitter. You ready, Brains? Yeah. I've lined the transmitter up. Right. Go. Retros must have fired. We're moving away from the sun. We're moving away from the sun. Virgil, uh, something's happening. I I'm getting a reading from Thunderbird 3. Yeah, me too. It can mean only one thing. The Retros. Yeah, they fired. The Retros have fired on Thunderbird 3. Yes, brains came through just in time. We were convinced we were beyond help. At least if we'd been conscious, that would have been our thought. It says a lot for Brains' engineering genius that Thunderbird 3 stood up to the tremendous heat. Of course, we also have a very soft spot for Brayman since that particular rescue. Well, I'm approaching Thunderbird 5 now. Thanks for joining me on the trip. See you all again soon, I hope. Goodbye for now. to Sun Chrome, brought to you by Jerry Anderson with help from his fan club, Anderson. The series was produced for Radio 5 by Christopher Aldrich. Coming up next week on Thunderbirds, Terror in New York City. In all the years of my broadcasting, this must be the most breathtaking moment I have ever experienced. Hold everything. Something's gone wrong. The ground is cracking under the track. It's like an earth tremor beneath my feet. There is something wrong. The atomic motors are shutting down.
We have just been ordered off this site by the police. There is, I understand, a very real danger that the entire building could collapse at any moment. We will be on the air again as soon as we have... Oh, 